Hey explorers, have you ever seen a plant, animal, or item that glows in the dark? This is because of a property called luminescence, and today we're going to explore one type of luminescence called fluorescence, as well as make a treat that emits an eerie glow. Ooh. One form of luminescence, and the one we're going to look at today, is fluorescence, which is the light emitted by a substance when it absorbs light or other electromagnetic radiation. First, the substance absorbs the energy, then it emits light. And when the original light source is removed, the fluorescence stops occurring. In most cases, the light given off has a longer wavelength and lower energy level than the light absorbed. Now this is a black light which emits ultraviolet light and only a very small amount of visible light. But what happens when the ultraviolet light from the black light comes in contact with something that's fluorescent? It is absorbed, changed, and emitted back as a light that we can see. There are many fluorescent materials in our daily lives, including minerals and biological life forms, plants and animals. These can even be used to make dyes for clothing so we can turn science into fashion. If you ever want to know if some of your clothing has some of these dyes in it, you can always look up glow-in-the-dark bowling at a local bowling alley. It's a fun activity, plus you get to see fluorescence in action. Black lights are essential when UVA light without visible light is needed, particularly when observing fluorescence. Now here is a little known fact. Tonic water will fluoresce under ultraviolet light and appears visibly fluorescent in direct sunlight. This is because it has quinine, which comes from the bark of the cinchona tree, which can be found in South America, Central America, some Caribbean islands, and some parts of the western coast of Africa. The cinchona tree is also known as the Andean fever tree, and this is because quinine was a medicine which was very popular in Britain for a while because it treated, among other things, fever. Quinine was discovered in the 17th century, about 300 years ago, and was soon found to be a natural remedy for a disease called malaria, which is a terrible disease spread by mosquitoes. Malaria causes fever, chills, and severe flu-like symptoms. Malaria isn't as widespread as it was back then, but even today, when traveling to certain parts of the globe, it is suggested to get a malaria vaccine to avoid getting sick. In 1858, quinine was such a popular medicine to treat malaria, digestive issues, and fever that it was used as one of the main ingredients in tonic water. It's actually what gives tonic water its bitter taste. Tonic water was once strictly a medicine, but today is actually just a classic bitter soda that some people love. It's also widely available, which is great because it's a key ingredient in today's experiment. We are going to make glow-in-the-dark jello and use a black light to see just how fluorescent it is. For this experiment, the materials you'll need are two cups of tonic water, a jello packet, a black light, as well as a pot, a stove, a bowl, a spoon, a fridge, and a little bit of time. Or if you want to get fancy, you can use a mold, but you will need cooking spray to spray the inside of the mold so your jello doesn't stick. Step one is to measure one cup of tonic water, put it in your pot, then place your pot on the stove over high heat, bringing it to a boil. You can also use a kettle for this. While the tonic water boils, put your jello packet into your bowl. When the tonic water is boiling, carefully remove it from the stove and pour it into the bowl with the powder. Stir with the spoon until the jello is fully dissolved. Add another cup of cold tonic water to the bowl. This could be replaced with regular water, which will reduce the bitter taste of the tonic water from the finished jello. You can also counteract the bitterness by adding whipped cream or fruit. If you pour it into the mold, make sure to spray the inside of your mold with cooking spray in order to make sure that the jello comes loose easily. Cool in the fridge for four hours or more. Overnight is best. Remove it from the fridge after the time is up, turn off all the lights, and shine your black light on it. The fluorescent quinine will absorb the ultraviolet light, change its wavelength, and shine it back out as part of the visible light spectrum. Glowing jello! As we see, the quinine in the jello is taking our UV light 
changing its wavelength, lowering its energy level, and shining it back out as an eerie glow-in-the-dark jello. Oh, neat. And now that we're dark, we can also have a look at the original tonic water, which just lights up as soon as the UV light hits it. That is so cool. And there we go, a glow-in-the-dark tasty treat that converts ultraviolet light into a wavelength that we can see on the visible light spectrum. For more observations on the world around us, subscribe to Clayton's Exploration Station on YouTube and social media. Plus, for worksheets on this experiment and our others, you can check out our website, explorationstation.net. Now you stay curious out there, explorers. Clayton's Exploration Station.